everybody, this is Adam Gusso from Modern Blues Harmonica playing a key of C harmonica today and I'm going to talk to you about an aspect, this is a beginner lesson and I'm going to try to clarify something that I think is actually very much misunderstood by beginning players. Certainly I hadn't the faintest idea about this when I began many decades ago and so I think most people know that, that the harmonica has associated with it a certain kind of sound. I'm going to call it the wah-wah sound. And uh, the question is how to make this sound and in effect how do you hold your hands to, how do you use your hands to shape blues harmonica sound. So we're going to start obviously by sort of reviewing something that, that I've talked about in a number of videos, holding the harmonica, and I'm going to show you this, what I call the reference standard grip. So this, this, this lesson is not about that, but I want to just very quickly review. I'll put a link down below for how to hold the harmonica. This is about sort of once you know how to hold it, what to do with your hands to shape the sound. So we're sort of mirror image here. I'm going to show you this way, and I'm going to show you this way, all right? The key thing, obviously holding the harmonica, to, again, to review, we're moving really quickly, would be that you want your fingers equidistant uh, on the upper, this is your index finger and your thumb, equidistant on the upper and lower uh, cover plates respectively. It's very important, not like this, to review, but like this. So if you have a little harmonica book and it shows you this, wrong, this is right. I'm not going to talk about why that is, but it makes actually a, a large difference. Two hands, third finger, your uh, your middle finger, I guess. So uh, yeah, middle, got to be careful with YouTube community standards. Middle finger, give your middle, put your, excuse me, put your middle finger across the back, okay? That makes a really strong, powerful thing. We're going to hold it like that. We're going to curl our fingers over it. You can do a still frame. I'll probably show this as a still frame at some point. And we're going to take this other hand and we're going to we're going to put this right hand. And this is very important. Elbows, 45 degree angle on your left wrist, 85 degree angle or almost 90, but a little bit out on your right wrist. So. Very important, actually, those angles makes a difference. So it's angled so that mostly you're kind of coming in on a 45 degree angle and this hand is like this. Now, you got that, right? So you might want to try to review, play a, play a chord, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four. Draw, big fat lips, blow it out. Should, if you have a harp that's in tune, that's not yet flatted out. And if your embouchure is correct, should sound nice. Again, I have other videos that show how to do all this stuff. We're sort of reviewing quickly because, one more thing, single note, two draw. Yours doesn't sound like that. It sounds like that. Fatten your lips. Yours sounds mine. Fatten your lips. Okay, are you up to speed? So we've got a workable grip. This hand is gonna come in. I'm gonna put my thumb either on the outside Again, you may want to sort of reverse this for you. Right, right thumb on the outside or right thumb kind of looped. Now, now, you got all that. You got all that. Okay. There are two very different ways of making a wah-wah sound, and this is really the core of this lesson. One of them, inv and, they, and what's different about them, I mean, they're completely different in effect, but, but and they tend to blend and you probably will not be able to do the two of them as entirely distinct things but they're actually very different and they have different sounds let me show you I'll, I'll first I'll just use I'll make the sound number one that's number one number two now the first one was wah wah the second one was wah 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 kind of a made with an entirely different hand motion did you notice the difference so number one is I am rotating, and I'm actually, it's like I'm rotating like this. This is the, let me back up. This is how I'm opening up, and I'm not opening very much, but I am opening the hand. If that looks really cool, yeah, it's, it's really cool. This is what pros do. This is what my teacher, Nat Riddles, did. I'm pivoting. Look at this. Ah! C'est bien. La votre cuisine est le meilleur que j'ai jamais. Bon appétit. Okay, so it's the bon appétit sign. All right. 
and you're rotating slowly. Now look at, look at those fingers. The fingers are coming off and they're rotating. So the key element of this grip and this type of wah-wah, and this is what Sonny Boy Williamson used, the key thing is you have to begin with it completely sealed on the bottom. Look at that, sealed. If yours is like this, well, you can't make the sound. It starts sealed, and if you start really sealed, you don't have to open it very much to make a really cool sound. So you're starting with it sealed, which what it does is basically, it's like a mini loudspeaker in reverse. You're holding all of the highs, all of the high frequency, all of frequencies that are a part of every harmonica note. That high edge, if I want to accentuate, by the way, Sonny Terry. You hear that? That's me doing something with my mouth to accentuate the highs. Well, we're doing the reverse. It, oh, so we're sort of containing the highs, the high frequencies, the re high frequency resonances, the upper harmonics of the, the particular note we're playing. And then we're opening. And when we open, we don't have to open much. When we do it, those high frequencies come out. And that's the wah. It's almost the ooh, the, the ah of wah is just normal frequencies. The ooh is like what happens when you're keeping a scream inside. Ooh, somebody's trying to, you know, ad abduct you. Ooh, 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 bah, right? So that wah, that's what we're doing. We're letting the highs out. We're letting the highs resume their normal place in the harmonics. So that's the normal sound. Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. Anyway, I'm a, when I went off to college, I wanted to be an audio engineer. This stuff's fascinating. Different frequency curves and stuff. And if you're going to record your own music, you need to understand this stuff. Because if you want the harp to pop without being sharp, you got to know how to raise and lower certain frequencies to make that happen. So, what am I doing? I am rotating. If I put the harp down, well, it doesn't work if I put the harp down. I'm rotating and I'm just opening a little. And I'm, if you look from the top, this is the top view, I'm just rotating the fingers, not much. And I'm using the those fingers there as a kind of pivot. So this is the way the pros do it. The alternative would be to have your thumb on the outside. That works too. Without, you know, as you're not looping it, but you have the thumb on the outside of the harp, the right side of the harp. Perfectly good. Why is that not quite as good? Well, it's really complicated, but if I want to get a super wah, I want to actually block the upper notes. That lets less air come out of the harp by way of the harmonica on the upper notes. So actually... If I, if I seal it way down and just have that section, those one, two, three, four, five holes covered with my chin, I'm really sealing it then. Now, how do you make wah? Well, you make the wah by opening more from a completely sealed position. So the more you can distinguish really sealed from really open, and the more quickly you can do it, the more you get a powerful wah sound. Now that's sound number one, which is the this motion. Now we're going to move on to sound number two, which I think of as the campfire sound. <laughs> Sitting around the fire, shorty. Love them braised ribs you got there in the tomato sauce. What am I doing? Totally different hand movements from sound number one. Okay, so sound number one again. But let's say, let's say I want to do a kind of tremolo sound. Tremolo sound, not a wah wah exactly, but kind of tremolo campfire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the fingers up. I'm opening those fingers up. So instead of holding them and, op and, 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 and just going like that, I'm going to go back as though I were look in, moving in the direction of a guy who was going to take a, a, like a waiter, is going to take a tray with some plates on it, but I'm only 45 degrees. So that's the way to think about it. Open up the hand, 
Notice this cup here, right? I've got these fingers flat against my hand and there's no, nothing escaping. So that's really important. You have to play around with this. Um, I need to pay my art director a little bit more for a little bit better photography. Art director is really... So, I'm going to open it. And then, instead of the loop thing, instead of this motion, I'm going to... I'm moving basically my wrists. I'm moving off my wrists. I'm using this hand and I'm flapping the hand with big, oh, wide open fingers. Totally different sound. So if I were doing a uh, recording session, if somebody wanted me to do a jingle, I didn't have many jingles, but if somebody said, I want you to get that old Sergio Leone kind of spaghetti western, you know, camp, around the campfire in the old west, I would need this technique, right? And so you can think about, are there occasions when it makes sense to do that? It's not as bluesy in a sense, it's more kind of going in the folk a little more country, but more kind of folk direction. But it's an important sound to know. And it's really important because you've got to know, you can't confuse the two. So, if, this is, so this is not the way to get the Sonny Bo Williamson. You have to curl those fingers. And remember, Sonny Boy Williamson, heavy blues, rotate the wrist. Okay, well, James Cotton will use that sound. And in fact, there's a, there's a third way to do it. He'll call it fanning it, which is to say you can take your hand entirely off the harp. Maybe I had, thought I had two. Maybe there's three. Wow, that's the one, right? That's the one you wanted all the time. We got to it. Fanning the harp. Okay, so I've shown you the two, then we stumbled on a third one, which is with the hand all the way off. So there actually are kind of three ways of doing it. Two with the hands on. I'm not going to review them because you know them now, right? Rotate the wrist, then flap it open. Slow, fast, and then really super aggressive fanning. And of course, what I'm doing there, so that you're not confused, is I'm actually also sharpening the sound of that four draw. I'm using a little bit of a bend, and I'm putting my tongue forward. That tends to highlight the high-frequency resonances of the notes. I'm adding a little bit of the five draw. Wow. I think we're done. I think I've shown you the three things. If I go any further, you're going to get confused. Two plus one equals three. This is the good Dr. Gusso. If you want to learn more about blues harmonica, well, number one, subscribe to my channel. I always forget, because I'm just giving this stuff away. I always forget to ask people to do that. So subscribe if you would. But also, Check out the link below. I'll give you a couple links to my website, Modern Blues Harmonica, my creaky 10 years out of date, but it works. And I have shown thousands of beginners how to take their first steps. Ask anybody on the web. I was there. I was there back in 2007. <sighs> I'm getting old and tired, but I'm still having a little bit of fun. Okay, I'll be back with you soon with another lesson. Hope you enjoyed this lesson on Wawa's. <laughs> Down the road. Bye-bye.